Okey-dokey. All righty. Uh, we're going out on, uh, let me see here. Are we going out on, uh, yeah, we're going out uh, doing a stream uh, out on audio. And uh, hey, let me get rid of this here. Uh, this is uh, this is Josh Wheeler, ladies and gentlemen. Josh is going to do a little show here uh, and um, take your calls and to see how uh, how it goes. And uh, I hope it goes good for you. Uh, first of all, I've got to do some uh, one other thing here. I've got to make Josh a, a co-host. Um, OK, and I go, yes, I want to make him a co-host. So now he's a co-host. <laughs> And he can turn you on and off and do all those kind of things. And uh, you, you might want to try and bring Alan in there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I will, uh, I'll be back towards uh, the end of the show to say goodbye to all of you. All right. Uh, all right. Okay. Have fun. I we'll see you in a little bit. The way I normally do. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing good. I just, I just went in through GabNet and clicked Zoom. So. That would work. Yeah, if you're going to participate, you don't have to have it up on Facebook, I guess. So I guess not. Sure, we'll have a couple other people hop on in a second. But anyway, after uh, Alex tonight, Jack is off, you know, for a little while again, it sounds like. So I'll do uh, <clears throat> do a little bit of filling in. There's a couple things we can talk about tonight, but anybody that wants to call should feel free to go ahead and call. You can talk about what's on our list. You can talk about something that's not on our list you can pretty much talk about whatever you want um you know or chime in and let us know what you think about what we have to talk about tonight um you know we get a couple others on i think maybe we can get it rolling here but uh you know the, the one thing we didn't talk about on uh you know um alex's tonight was uh i think late this week there was some news about you know uh, ukraine in their and their war with, you know, Russia right now has uh -huh. been requesting some, uh, some more weapons and some new weapons. They want some more offensive type of weapons. And uh, there are a lot of people out there who think that that is not a good idea for us to do that. Um, but it is an interesting question, you know. Um, I think that they obviously have the Russians sort of on the defensive now and on the run. And Ukraine has uh, gotten aggressive and said, you know, why we have this situation, why we have this advantage, we want to try to dip into some military tactical playbooks here. And we want to try to, we want to try to press that advantage. You know, we want to try to, uh, <laughs> we want to try to Stonewall Jackson, press on, you know, press on. We want to, we want to get it while they're getting as good. And, you know, they asked for some munitions that uh, my opinion is I, I think that I might be willing to do that. Um, I know that the American government is probably not going to come out and advertise it or anything. But, you know, I, I think that it's probably not that bad of an idea. You know, what kind of bothers me is, you know, like Richard Haas, for example, who is the president of the Council on Foreign Relations, is on the Morning Joe a lot. And uh, he is always against almost anything Ukraine wants. The same thing over and over because he thinks it'll aggravate the Russians and make them want to escalate and all this. And, you know, he's he, I'm starting to think maybe he's a he's a Russian uh you know, like a propagandist or a fucking appeaser or something. Because it's like Richard, you know, they're it doesn't matter what anyone does. They're not going to change their mind or stop. They're going to keep up this aggressive action for as long as it takes. So, like, the last thing in the world that I would be worried about is hurting Putin's feelings and making him, you know, angry or whatever. Right. You know, so I think I just thought that was an interesting topic about whether or not people, you know, thought if we should really step up our aid to Ukraine you know, and now not just in money, but in actual, you know, maybe like offensive weapons. Like, I think they had asked for some like cluster munitions and things like that, you know, some like short range and even some longer range stuff that they could use that, that do quite a lot of damage, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, stuff that we would use if we were in a war with Russia, for sure. So I think that's, I think that's pretty interesting. Um, 
uh, you know, I don't have all the details on it, but I, I got to be honest with you. I think that this is probably as vulnerable as the Russians have been for a while. Um, they are not our friends. They are not going to be our friends. Um, if they have some sort of regime change, I certainly would always be open to having peace and fair trade and, and so on with anybody. But that's not going to happen right now. And I think that we need to damage them, you know, as much as we possibly can, to be honest with you. So yeah. I would uh, I would probably be OK with it. I mean, it is a difficult thing. I get it because you're talking about, you know, uh, lives and, you know, Russian soldiers and stuff like that. But listen, the Russians have to handle their own business, you know, in their own way. So. All the Ukrainians can do is, you know, defend themselves. You know, I mean, there there were people that uh, Richard Haas, again, for example, who are upset that the Ukrainians have fired offensive rockets into Russia and taken out certain Russian military targets hundreds of miles over the Russian border. Uh, and he thinks, you know, that we should have condemned that. And all. come on, give me a break. I'm going mean, to. You know. I'm going to have to go in a few minutes, Josh. Sorry to interrupt. I was just That's okay. Gone. There'll be some people coming on. on here. Yeah, to hold hold your, your spot here. And yeah, I, I got to go take care of mom, but I wanted to just get on for a minute. So yeah, keep, that's going. No problem. keep going. I didn't want but, you to be alone. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, 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 I've been here by now, Kevin, to be on. And yeah, and, he'll, he'll be along here in a minute. You know, if not, I'll just tell people what I think about stuff for an hour. <laughs> I'm okay with, uh, I'm okay with really with whatever. Isn't that what you know, that's was about? That's uh, that's the you know one of the things that you know I didn't really hear talked about much this week was Ukraine's Ukraine's request to kind of step up the offensive and, and you know sort of to have us help them provide them with the capabilities to do it. Which you know again I think I'm probably okay with. Sure. Um, how's Kevin doing tonight? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah, I was talking about the Ukrainians there asking for some more weapons to try to beat the Russians up a little bit. So, you know, um, you know, last time I filled in, I did this thing, you know, like stuff that I don't care about or stuff that drives me crazy or whatever. And uh mine for tonight is that I go to the Washington Post, okay, and you go about halfway down and it tells you like what uh, I'm gonna pull this up here. Like, what are their most read stories of the day? And this is, maybe this is what's wrong with, you know, the world. I don't know. But the most read story on the Washington Post today is the Ask Carolyn article. Carolyn Hacks chat. Hoot nanny of holiday horrors for 2022. I mean, really? That's really? the most read fucking article on the Washington Post today. Wow. You have to be, what is wrong with people in these uh, writing into these columnists and asking them advice? I mean, I think that was big and like, you know, way back or whatever, but really, I mean, I think that is just the most. <laughs> that dress stuff drives me crazy when you go somewhere. And that's, that's like, that's like a tie for me and the World Cup. Okay. Like the two things that I, I can, not I mean, you know, like totally not care about any less would maybe be that article and uh and maybe in the World Cup, you know. So and I hear the Americans are out again, you know, big surprise. So if uh if you're teaching your kid to play soccer instead of football, thanks a lot. You're you're helping create this this problem that we have to put up with every couple of years, apparently. And I guess it comes here in a few years, is my understanding. Even better. Great. So even better. But uh so does Kevin care that Kristen Cinema left the Democratic Party? Was he heartbroken or uh did that did that break you up today? What was that? Did you hear that Kristen Cinema left the Democratic Party? No, I did not. No, she will she will leave the Democratic Party and become an independent. Fourth page news. You know, so yeah, she will leave the Democratic Party 
<clears throat> become an independent because that, uh, in her mind or her opinion, her words, I don't have them exact, uh, that better represents uh, her position on issues and, you know, representing the people very, you know, yada, you know, the, the things that people would say when they do something like that, it's right? So, true. Yeah, that may be right. You know, so she will enjoy the four or five consecutive days of people talking about her. Um, you know, so I, I think she's into that. But uh, you know, which which by the way, I mean so I'll go ahead and say stuff that'll piss people off because I hear that's good to do on, you know, when you are on the radio or whatever, but every once in a while I turn on C SPAN and you know, there's the US Senate chamber. And they're in a vote or something like that. So it's quiet. It's just the camera. And you see senators milling around and, uh, you know, chatting or whatever and everything. And she's always so easy to spot because, you know, like I turned it on the other day and, and she looked like a 14-year-old girl in the 80s on the floor of the U.S. She's literally wearing a jean skirt and some socks and a pair of tennis shoes and some kind of like fucking shirt or whatever and before anyone says oh that's so sexist would, would you say that about a man yes i guarantee the next time i turn on c-span and there's a male u.s senator and a fucking hawaiian shirt and a pair of khakis and some flip-flops i guarantee you i will come on gab that and say come on man can you fucking act like you have some sense when you show up to work at the u.s senate i mean you're not working the counter at a fucking thrift shop you know so if uh anyone has a problem with that, I don't know, I guess go ahead and call up and tell me, but I mean, I just, I, I turn it on sometimes, and it's like, she always sticks right out. It's like, you know, did they not tell you that you are working in the U.S. Senate now or something? I, I, mean, I, I don't know, but, she, you know, she's Democratic Party or not, I, I guess I don't care one way or the other. I mean, you know, if, uh, I don't think it changes anything, right? She's still going to try to fucking hold him over a barrel every time she can, you know, just like, oh, you know, yeah, I guess anybody else would probably to get whatever she wants. But, you know, but I mean, that's fairly interesting. I mean, the news really made it uh, the media like it was a, some sort of major thing or whatever. I, I don't really think it's as big as they made it out to be. I mean, it, 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 I mean, it was talked about, you know, at length on every news program today when I, when I was driving home that I would listen to, you know, on all the networks. Um, I mean, they were dedicating 15, 20 minute segments to it, you know? So, I mean, you know, they, they, they seem to think that it's pretty major. I don't really know that it is. I mean, uh, apparently she doesn't have, she's not going to caucus with the Republicans or anything like that. You know, so does it, it doesn't change anything in the house, does it? No, 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 yeah. no, no, it really doesn't, you know, make much a difference. It's just a way for her to just on TV wait. for a while, yeah. And I mean, you know, one thing that I, I'm sure it probably helps her that you know, they some of Democrats, uh, nationally and in Arizona. We're fairly unhappy with her anyway, or angry with her, and they probably would have primaried her to begin with. But you know the way it works in Arizona, and probably any other state, is because that was coming anyway. Now she doesn't care. She doesn't have to debate that person or beat them in a primary. If she gets her five thousand signatures or whatever it is in Arizona, uh, she's on the ballot as an independent. Right. You know, and she'll be a well-known person. You know, she's an incumbent. Um, so she doesn't really have to fight that. Yeah, she'll get what she gets now. or she'll get what she doesn't get. So I, I, you know, think there's probably some advantage. Now, I maybe that also means that she also won't get any help or money from the Democratic National Committee and like the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee and those kinds of things. Um, so that may hurt her. But then she can also raise money from anyone that she wants on her own, even if they happen to be from the other party and not catch flack about it from Democrats or whatever, because it doesn't matter. We'll see. Um, you know, but then again, who knows if that seat is like the Georgia seat or something in two years, Democrats through their, 
money system may very well support her, right? You know, because, you know, they would need the status quo rather than change. So, you know, that's, you know, you never know about that. So, I mean, it just depends, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know what will become of that, but she, uh, she's on her way to, you know, being an independent. So, um, probably more truly independent than, you know, like Bernie Sanders or Angus King, because they're, they're not too independent, you know, they're, they're really pretty leftist. Um, so this will be a little bit, you know, more of a different style of independent than the, than the U S Senate has seen for a while. I mean, I mean, that's interesting. I don't have a problem with people declaring their personal politics. Um, at all. I mean, they have a complete right to do that. Uh, I mean, you know, you know, they have a duty to do it. I don't particularly care for her doing it in a way that she sort of misrepresented herself, I think, you know, and then once elected, decided, you know, to do things that seem to be more politically advantageous to her than they do Arizona. Um, you know, I have a little bit of issue with that. Uh, and I particularly don't care for her much personally um, as a matter of, you know, personal taste for politicians. But other than that, I mean, she's well within her, uh, you know, she's well within her rights to do everything that she needs to do, you know, so or wants to do. So nothing wrong with that. But, uh, you know, that happened. Did you? Did you like the prisoner exchange yesterday? I mean, you know, I guess it, you know, bridge of spies, it wasn't, but you know, I mean, <laughs> I mean yeah, you no, know. he did what he could, but you know, I, I can, I can see Wayland's point, yeah, you know, uh, but I think it's we, obvious. I, I personally think that it was probably a little bit of a, a burn by Putin to do something like that. He probably did that to piss every get everybody pissed at Biden. That's what I think, anyway. Yeah. Um, because he, he could have easily made some kind of a deal that way, but I think he was doing it to stir up the government here. He wanted to be in control, get the people to get pissed off at the government, yeah. and he's doing it. <clears throat> you know, everybody's yeah. stirred up at, at Biden now because he didn't make a big stir over. Uh, you know, trying to get Wyland back, which I think he is trying to get him back, obviously. Right. Yeah. But I, 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 you know, nobody's believing that. Everybody thinks, oh, they just forgot him and they're bringing back the black lesbian and, you know, the whole bit. And it's not, it's not, you know, he, he's getting what he can. But, you know, I, I don't think any other president would have done anything different. <clears throat> and it's just going to be a matter of whether he can get the guy back or not. Yeah. No. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think, I think it's still going to be a tough deal because who do we got to deal with them now? I don't know who. Well, else. they, yeah, they really don't. I mean, uh, I, I guess even just removing him from the equation or whatever. I mean, look, I understand that. Uh, um, so I'm sure I have a take on here that most people don't care for, but I've got to go. I mean, I understand her predicament. Um, you know, and obviously it's, you know, it's fine that she's back in the States and home and everything. Yeah. You know? I mean, uh, look, she went to Russia. Okay. I mean, first, all right. That's, uh, your, her first mistake, <laughs> you yeah. know, one, one way that I probably will guarantee that I will never end up in a Russian prison is I will never go to Russia. Right. Um, you know, because I don't trust them. I didn't trust them then. I don't trust them now. Um, but I get, you know, it's a, free world in some ways and you're okay to travel wherever you want but that does come with risk i mean well she was trying to make money at the time and you know, she's trying to make money and she's always been yeah. over playing I for get, the which, which i get and which, uh you know, you know if she wants to make money you know get a fucking job in the states i guess but um, you ought to be a little more careful yeah. too yeah right like the rest of us i mean i want to make money too matter of fact i really want to make a lot of money but if somebody calls me up and says you can make a lot of money working in, you know, Abu Dhabi or, or Moscow. I think I would say, no, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you know, me. All right. 
but to, other people are allowed, which is fine. But part of that choice is what comes with it. Um, sure. Learn the rules. Yeah, right. Um, you know, so, um, yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't have as much problem with her personally or anything as I do, you know, like with what was given up for it, you know. I, I think that's a bit of a stretch. And I understand people are saying, well, that's what the Russians, you know, that was the only deal they would accept or take or whatever. Fine. Within their rights. Um, I think I personally would have taken him to the tarmac and shot him in the fucking head before I would have given him, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, I would have been fine if they would have done that. I mean, but, you know, I mean, I guess then it really doesn't matter because it's done, but I'm just saying, you know, this does allow them in a way to take whoever they want and now get whatever, you know what I'm saying? So look, if you're from this point forward, if you're an American citizen and you travel to Russia, I kind of think you're on your own because, you know, if you break one of their laws and they use you for this, or if they plant something on you and they use you, I mean, you've been warned, have you not? So I, I don't know if from like here forward, we need to be worrying too much about any new people, you know, right. um, in my opinion. And, and I understand some people are going to say, well, my husband works for a company and they do business in Russia and he had, no, he didn't have to do shit. Okay. He chose to. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry. And get a different fucking job, you know, like I can guarantee you if I came home tomorrow and I said, babe, you know, they said I got to go to Moscow or I can't work here anymore. Um, my wife's answer is you're getting another job and I'm, you know, then we're going to do whatever you've got to do. I mean, you know, so look, you know, that that's your choice. But yeah, I mean, I get it. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, were you OK with it, I guess? You know, I mean, I don't I don't I mean, I don't know if it, you know, I mean, it did rub some people the wrong way. So we'll see. But you know, I I don't think it was a great idea. I, I just didn't know what you thought about it or whatever, but um, you know, that, that's interesting. Um yeah, it's pretty much the same feeling. You should even before all this, when you go to another country, you learn the rules. Right, and that's right. the bottom line. Even before any kind of upset that was going on or anything you when i always learned that working internationally you learn the rules if you're going to a country you learn the rules they've right. got different ones i was uh, i was told at one time that i needed to go to singapore and i said no i don't think i'm going to go because i don't think i can deal with the rules you know spit on the ground nice. you go to jail <laughs> throw you know throw papers on the ground you you know if i if i littered by accident i'd probably end up in jail you know yeah. stuff like that yeah i mean you know you do take and make certain uh you know decisions and things like that so i mean you know i mean i get it i mean you know uh, i didn't quite understand the constant um like infatuation with her being there you know i mean no uh, every like day an compare, update you know i mean it's almost like, on my list of things i didn't care about because like i said i mean you know well uh, people compare our laws to theirs and say well it was only a small bit of hash oil or cannabis or whatever oil uh, in, in it well you know what their rules are different i wouldn't take any chances if i would even like take that. anything and i mean the, the newsflash russia is not a free country and if you're doing it by accident, that's something you check before you leave. Yeah, correct. I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm sorry. It's just, it's just not a free country. It's just not. Yeah, you, know? and you could have, you could have been. It could have been a lot worse off. I probably wouldn't walk down the street with an open bottle of, you know, liquor in Dubai either. I mean, you know, I mean. Yeah, you don't. I mean, I hear that's a bad idea either. there. You know. I, I hear they're hypocritical about it and all that. Okay, fine. Look, but, I take the chance. You know, it's their fucking sand pit. They're allowed to do whatever they want with it. You know, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. You know, so, uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I, 
it's not like a bad person or anything. I no, just, you want to get them out of there, but you know, when the circumstances are, you know, you look at the difference between why he's there and they're accusing him of, of espionage. That's a little bit different type of, uh, that's something that it had to be proven. And you don't know if that was proven. He claims it was a scam trial. That could very well be. Now, that's a different sick situation. There was no evidence. There was just hyperbole, probably. Right. Um, he had a job there, and they said that he was doing something that was against their rules, and he says they weren't. And he claims a scam trial, and they put him in jail, and there could have been an example set there. That seems a little more, more negotiable than what they found on her, which was, you know, solid evidence. Right. And I don't know. You, I would have thought there would be more of an effort to get him out first than getting her out first. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I know they say, um, you know, that, uh, sorry. That's why I think a... there was a little bit behind, you know, Putin's, thing that you know they're getting her out first and they're going to leave him in there to him for him to stir up our government by making biden look bad yeah right i mean you know the uh i mean he gets put in a bad position there because you know if he makes this deal they have ammunition to beat him up and if he would have made no deal they would have ammunition to beat him up and even though that's what they would do does doesn't matter yeah. You know, I mean, even though they said probably, you know, if they were really a hardcore conservative, right, uh, law and order and all that, they would probably say what I said, which was <laughs> I'd walk that fucker out to the tarm and literally and shoot him in the fucking head. And they can take him back to Russia like that yeah. before I would make a deal. I'm not, you know, I'm just saying that would be their position, even though that would be their position. It won't be after they found out, oh, what? He had a chance and he didn't sweet you know we we can we can hit him hard on that you know i mean yeah. they they would lie and and do that i mean you know for a political win which is sick in itself right but you know the way it works i mean um we're not a perfect country either so i mean yeah i think that would be you know something that they would do for sure um you know so i mean yeah it's it's <laughs> Yeah, the whole thing was complicated. I mean, I don't know. I mean, look, I get that she was kind of put in a sham deal there and all that. But, uh, you know, maybe the. Uh, I, I'm just maybe like the word is out now. Right. So six months from now, if there is some American citizen in Russia that is arrested for something. I almost I don't I don't want to hear it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to hear it. It's like. You know, it's like calling me up because you went to Smalley and got kidnapped. I mean, yeah, Sucks <laughs> you. you know, really, that's interesting. I mean, <laughs> yeah. don't you know, call me. Like, I'm not like you didn't you know, you know, the high probability or what, you know, I mean, so, uh, I mean, you know, I guess, you know, which which makes me think of it. Uh, you know, I sat at that hotel, you know, restaurant last night and I read this article in the Washington Post about uh, this group of cheerleaders from the Washington Redskins that is now going to sue them for videos and stuff that they made of them back in like 04 and 05 and all that and being mistreated and they didn't pay them enough and all kinds of other stuff. Right. And I get it. All that happened back then. But this is like the fourth or fifth story of teams that treated their cheerleaders like really bad and all, you know, like didn't pay them very much and made them wear skimpy outfits. And, 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 you know, guys would walk by and tell them, you know, you look like you gained a few pounds. You need to not do that. And, you know, she, you know, like really bad harassment and all that. So like, I don't want to hear any more of those in like a couple of years, like, You've been warned. If you go work for a football team and like three years from now, like the the first time someone says something to you, you know that it's wrong. You either need to quit or report them or whatever. Don't wait till like 10 years after that and then say, 
man, you know, I worked there for like eight years and they treated me terrible and uh, I'm going to sue them now. Now, the, these ones are OK. I'm, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm just saying like there's been so many of those out there now that I think word is out that. Uh, NFL teams do not treat their cheerleaders very well. So if you want to be an NFL cheerleader, you probably shouldn't expect like to be treated very good, you know, <laughs> which is not good. But, uh, you know, there's no law that says they have to treat you well. They can't harass you or discriminate against you, all that, I'm, you know, right? But they don't have to respect you. I mean, they, <laughs> they, they are going to use you like a piece of meat. Yeah. Um, you know, so. You know, you've you've been warned. Probably get away with it. Probably, yes. You know, but I mean, yeah, I mean that. You know, that's the way it is. I mean, the yeah, the whole thing. You know, with the the Russian deal was, you know, that was kind of interesting. Um. Uh, you know, sorry, there's a problem with my work, which is I'm going to quit this fucking job. I really am because I'm I'm it's twelve thirty in the fucking morning. You know, I mean, you know, but the, uh, you know, um, just one second here. But, you know, the, the other thing that I was going to talk about today is. Uh, the. The. Uh, Sorry, go, go figure. I try to do something once. You know, you can't get away from this place. Um, but you know, the, the other thing that we talked about on, on Alex's show, I, I I know I sent you guys something the other day about the uh, you know, that 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 court case with the redistricting is is fairly interesting. Um, you know, should states su supreme courts have the right to be a check on their legislatures? you know, when they, when they make these funky maps, right. You know, and you know, there's a, there's a case in front of the court where, you know, the petitioners are arguing, no, they never should be able to, the legislature should be able to draw whatever they want. And as long as it doesn't violate Congress's federal laws, you know, it may violate their own state, whatever, but you know, it doesn't matter. Their court can't do anything about it. That's sort of a, new idea, you know, and it's sort of a dangerous precedent, right? I mean, I don't know how the redistricting goes in California. Um, I imagine it's probably a fight. It's definitely been a fight in some of these states, like Ohio. It went through their court system. You know, I know Patrick and I, we were all talking a couple of weeks ago or whatever about, you know, they had that big mess in Wisconsin. Um, you know, New York had that big craziness, you know, and it actually ended up costing them some seats because they they fucked up, right? You know, and this case is out of North Carolina. I mean, that's kind of a dangerous deal if you think about it, saying that the courts can, in the states, cannot have any say, you know, and whether or not you think they should, I guess, is different. They're making a constitutional argument that they don't have the power, you know, which is sort of interesting because it's been going on for quite a long time. And it's interesting that someone just finally said, well, they can't do that, you know? I mean, that, you know, that that part is interesting, which was brought up in the arguments that I listened to. You know, there was some question about saying, what made you say this now? You know, these state courts have been stopping these for, you know, for quite a while now. So, what well, you know, what changed? But, you know, that's fairly interesting. I mean, I always like those separation of powers, uh, you know, type things and stuff like that. You know, they get a little bit interesting uh, to me, I guess. I don't know what you think, but, you know, they. Yeah, I didn't hear much about it. Yeah. But it was pretty good. You know, I mean, uh, that, that, that one will be sort of a big one. I mean, look, if they come out and say, yeah, you're right. Um, state Supreme Courts can no longer review the maps that are redrawn for redistricting, you know, and what would it be now, eight more years when they redraw maps again, 
it will be pure insanity in some of the some of these states, right? I mean, right. you will you will have the like your neighbor across that, the street that have a different congressman than you. Right. You know? Is that this, is that a is that normal oversight? I don't know much about it. I know that there's some oversight, but I know and I know that they they use you know at least on a local basis. I don't know a lot about that, but on a local basis, they they include the public and the community when they're doing the local stuff. Yeah. Um, but they also use a lot of models that, you know, will try to even things out, like around. Yeah. They would use models that, you know, incorporate X amount of Black people, X amount of Hispanic people, X amount right. of, you know, growth. Yeah, the, California, that must be the way they do it there. Yeah. So some states don't don't do that, you know, and they, and they don't have to. I mean, it says the states can run their federal elections the way that they want and their uh, their redistricting and, and, you know, that the legislatures of the states are in charge of it. And they're making this argument that the Constitution says that the legislature is in charge of it. So the legislature, therefore, can do whatever they want. It can't go to the state Supreme Court because the state Supreme Court is not part of the legislature. You know, I mean, it, you know, they're just there. That's the argument that they're making in, in many ways. And I mean, you know, but anything that the state legislature does per the state constitution has oversight from the state's Supreme Court, just like ours does. In the federal system, right? It's 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 the same sort of setup in, in in these states, and they're making the argument: No, that's not what it says. It says the legislature, the legislature, therefore, can do whatever they want because it only says the legislature. Now they leave out some information, you know, like for instance, when that was written, we didn't really have too many state court systems, hardly at all. And certainly not in that form. You know, we barely had a U.S. Supreme Court. Um, and it wasn't really functioning like it does today, right? I mean, it didn't really take its current form until, you know, 20 years down the road in Marbury v. Madison, for example. You know, so that's that's a little interesting. I mean, it, it was a totally different world, um, you know, which has to be considered. But that's a little bit of a... You know, that's it's got to be studied to decide where you come down on it. But I do know that the consequence of saying that state courts have no say in this whatsoever is purely the legislature. Yeah. Then it will it will be a partisan bonanza. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to rule out the Democrats to do the same thing. I'm sure that they would. You know, I'm not going to act like they're you know on the side of the angels here or whatever. <laughs> you know that. That they wouldn't, I mean, maybe the Democratic Party in some of these most states would do the right thing or whatever, but I'm not trying to paint it like that. I'm just saying it gives state legislatures quite a lot of power over their own redistricting with no real oversight, you know, and that's that's a fairly radical departure from what we have now, right? I mean, yeah, I don't I don't know how they do it in California, but we okay. actually lost my area here, our uh, district changed and we lost, well, if we had two pretty good uh, reps here, we had Jimmy Panetta and he moved a district over and we ended up with Zoe Lofgren. So, you know, neither one of them are too bad. I mean, I like Jimmy Panetta more. But, you know, we end up with Zoe Lofgren and then Lo Zoe Lofgren got challenged by one of our local people here and got wiped out. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Right. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, it, I don't know who, how that, once they redistrict, who oversees it and says, okay, that looks good. I mean, that's... Well, I mean, in most of these states, you know, they have... Some of them have different laws, you know, like some we're of them kind of out here in the boonies and we, we're in an area where, uh, 
we're 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 the butthole of the area and you know it's like yeah. okay you get them no you get them no you get them no you get them and it's right. you know we're kind of a a rural area and we're kind of being put in the the tail end of the silicon valley now rather than the you know over by the coast and it's kind of strange because we're now at the bottom of the silicon valley rather than over on the coast side and it's it's a little different <clears throat> so i don't you know it changes things quite a bit really right yeah, right i mean and, you know like they some of them have like committees some of them have like uh agencies i mean it i think you know every state is i think it's right? both here i mean they have a committee with an agency doing right. it and they yeah the committee you know kind of walks them through and it and, gets it gets kind of confusing i guess you know because they yeah. all have their own different i mean there is no uniformity to it and there probably really never can be unless congress were to pass some laws right and say there has to be uniformity in this that and the other well it should be some you know, oversight because, right because then you know the constitution would say the legislature has you know the right to do it but they have to follow federal law because it's for federal elections and no state law can trump a federal law. So, yeah. you know, they can go that route, which is what the petitioners were saying. You know, the only oversight that could ever happen here is, is from Congress. You know, I, I mean, I'm just saying that, you know, you and I know that that's never going to happen. Right. I mean, Congress is never going to get itself to a point where it says we need to do the right thing. Both sides, we both need to agree that we're going to pass some good <laughs> restricting laws. Fair and square, right? Fair and square. I mean, when is that going to happen? Seriously. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that is going to happen, okay, the next time that there is a huge pass interference call in the NFL that's horseshit, and the coach from that team runs out and says, no, you, you ain't give no, we didn't, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't do that. No, we're, no, nope, we're good. We don't want that penalty. We'll decline that. Yeah. We're going to punt and lose the game now. Okay, yeah, sure. It happened the same exact fucking time that Congress decides, you know, to do the right thing. Yeah. It's, it's never going to fucking happen. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that that's, that's, that's never coming. I mean, so you can just forget that. But, I mean, at least not anytime soon. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen 50 years from now. Nobody does. But it's not going to happen right now. No way possible. So, I don't know. The uh, but you know that's that's the big political news I guess you know for the week I mean it's a fairly active week I guess it was quite a lot going on you know we had a U.S. senator leave the party you know uh, Ukraine and uh, Russian war is heating up pretty well and the Ukrainians are requesting help to you know put a hurting on the Russians and, and then at the very same time we're doing this you know, highly political, you know, high drama sort of prisoner swap, you know, with the Russians, um, you know, so talk about bad timing for the Ukrainians to be asking for more help, you know, um, you know, the huge court case heard this week, like I said, it's probably the most consequential one for election law since, you know, Bush v. Gore, you know, maybe, I mean, you know, uh, probably, um, you know, there was quite a lot going on and, Somewhere in all of that news, people had time to write the Washington Post, uh, Carolyn Hex, and ask her about holiday parties and shit like that. I mean, you know, so right. If they can talk about holiday parties, we can talk about the NFL. Yeah, I think you know that's fair, right? Right. I mean, you know, I think the Niners are going to roll forward with their. Uh, Brock Purdy, right? Is that his first name? His first name was yeah, name? yeah. Or is it Brock? Did I get it right? Yeah, and supposedly Jimmy doesn't have a broken foot. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I did hear that too. It's uh, no no surgery, so he could come back in a couple weeks, maybe. Yeah, they said about six seven weeks he could be back. Well, that's not too bad, you know. I think that uh, um, you know what what's the what's San Francisco's record? Oh shit! I can't remember. Uh, I can tell you here in a second. I was gonna say. I mean, I I don't know what. I mean, they're almost certainly gonna probably get to 
nine wins, right? I would think, you know, probably. So, yeah, is that going to be enough to guarantee getting in in the NFC? Maybe, right? Mm. Yeah, they're they're pretty much the fighting for the yeah. Division. I mean, it depends what their record yeah. is now. They might not have as many wins as I thought they had, or something. But I mean, they, uh, you know, they they, they should be are okay. eight and four. Oh, okay. Well, then I I can't see how they, you know, yep, can't get in the division too. I can't believe, you know, there's a lot of really bad records. Well, I get now. The, now then, they've got to win their division, don't they? Because the entire NFC East has uh, all the wild cards tied up in the moment. I think so. But one of those, they could beat one of those to to kick one of them out. So uh, yeah, I would say their chance is pretty pretty good. If I mean, if they could just win two games between now and the end of the year, right? That's going to get them to ten wins, and I can't imagine. Yeah, they got uh, Tampa Bay, they got Washington, right. and they got uh, Cardinals left. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine. You know, they've got to have like two other people. Well, other that's than a that, home right? Home. Right. So, I mean, I can't imagine that they can't find a way to get ten wins with, you know, somehow. I mean, they don't have to win these games and blowouts. I mean, you just got to win. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so. Yeah. Uh, you know, the same thing with Cincinnati. They're at eight wins. I mean, I cannot see how they do not get to ten, and. 10 has to get them in, you know, so, uh, I mean, they're, they're going to be, you know, probably fine other than that, but yeah, they got know, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Cincinnati is thinking about getting in. I think Cincinnati is thinking about what comes after they get in. Right. I mean, you know, so that that's good. I mean, uh, you got Tampa Bay, Seattle, Washington, the Raiders and Cardinals. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, that's, you know, at least some people finally came to their senses on the, on the, on the Raiders, you know, all I heard yesterday about how they were going to win that game. And it was going to be so many in a row. And here they come for the wild card. And then I started to hear, you know, man, you know, you know, they, they, they can end up playing in Cincinnati again, like they did last year. And I was like, okay, then bring them fuckers to town. That's fine. You know, I, uh, <laughs> and then now it's like, oh, we were wrong about the Raiders. We're sorry. Yeah, no kidding. You know, so that I concert, mean, they were they were talking about how the Raiders are going to take the butt, and then I come out of that that concert last night, and with my kid, and I'm here in the tail end of that drive. <laughs> yeah. Baker right. Mayfield yeah, I mean that's I couldn't going, watch What the hell is Baker Mayfield doing there? I yeah, didn't even hear yeah, they I, I, him. Yeah, I've heard the highlights. I couldn't watch it, you know, because of the travel and I was staying in the hotel yeah. out there. And, uh, you know, it's, now that they've moved it to Amazon Prime and all that, which, by the way, you know, I read an article that said that the viewership for Thursday Night Football was down, okay, and that the NFL was not happy with Amazon about it because they, they promised them a certain number, and it's down by, by like, oh. over a million viewers on average than it was last year, Okay. And as you and I know, football viewership is not down this year, okay? That is down on Amazon Prime. Yeah, but it's no wonder. You took the ability of a lot of people away to watch it. Yeah. Right? And I forget it's on Amazon. All of a sudden, well, I'm, I, yeah, even when I remember, I'm going, oh, yeah, there's a game. Yeah, I mean, even when I remember, I like to, like, flip around during commercials and stuff. I can't do that when it's on Amazon. Because you got to change the whole. It takes two platform. different fucking remotes because one of them is an input from the Roku, and the other one, you know, I got to get the other remote. Fuck that. <laughs> I mean, you know, if I, if I mean, if I like really, really, really wanted to see it, like if that game that night, you know, if my favorite team, you know, if that team loses tonight, your team is in or whatever. I, okay, then I might, you know, care. Make an effort. But that don't matter in week five and week six and week seven. Yeah. I mean, it, so I'm not going to go back and forth and back and forth. And, you know, for instance, if I had been staying in that hotel last night, last year on this date last year, do you know what I would have done last night? I would have watched Thursday Night Football. Yeah. I can't watch it. I can't watch it on Amazon Prime at the hotel. I don't want to watch it on my laptop. I was doing other stuff. I would yeah. have had it on the television. Right. 
there's a cheap watching that stuff. That would have been watching it, you know, that wasn't watching it last night. You think I wanted to watch uh, whatever I ended up watching last night? Like, you know, while I was working, I think fucking Home Alone or something was playing. Yeah. I would have watched Thursday Night Football. Yeah. I hate watching shit on my phone. Right. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. So, I mean, it's their own fault. I mean, how could they not have known that when they moved it to a streaming service that that has to cut out some people, you know? But they say Amazon Prime told them, you know, that viewership would go up and all. Yeah. And your army recruiter told you that you could have whatever job you wanted if you joined the army. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what? I mean, a fucking of course. The world. Right. I mean, you know. Yeah, you'll see the world. All right. Right. I'm just saying, like, yes, I'm sure they did. You know, I'm sure they didn't say, yeah, you know, your ship will go down. I mean, you know, so I don't know. I mean, I, I see that. I look, I get why these people are doing this stuff, but I don't I don't like it. I mean, it's fucking stupid. Just like they put all those baseball games last year on Apple TV only. You know, I had to watch four or five Reds games last year on Apple. You know, and it's like, again, I got to go to Apple's app to watch it. But now how during commercials can I flip to my MLB package on the screen with all the games and check all the fucking scores and watch the games, you know, like during commercials, right? So, no, I have to watch it on fucking Apple. So in order to change the channel, if you will, you got to back out of their app. Or change the input. I mean, I'm not going to do that every fucking time. I mean, so I don't know. I wonder if that stuff's going to last or not. Or I wonder if a couple of years from now, it's not going to be working out the way that it did or they thought that it would. And they're going to put it back to the way that it was some, you know, like get out of these contracts or when they expire, not renew them or what. I, some of them, I think, were for like 10 years or something. Though. So, oh, really? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I, I think maybe it wasn't, but I thought I that Apple one was smart and try it for a couple of years first and then see. Right. What I, I thought that Apple one was a fairly long one and it was supposed to like expand like like every year they were going to get like more and more games or whatever, you know. Plus, I don't want to listen to the fucking people that call those games, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to watch the age, you, you probably want to listen to the people that call the games every night, you know, like, yeah. You know, because that's well, and that's the thing is I used to like watching Al Michaels, and now you got to go to Prime to listen to Al Michaels, right? You know, and and, and you know, like with Apple, I mean, because this is the and this is going to piss people off, and I fucking really don't care, okay? Because this is what I think, but you know, of course, when you go to the Apple game, you know, they got to have a fucking woman call the game or what, like it, yeah, you know. There you go. I piss people off. Okay. I'm fucking, yeah. I don't, I don't care. I mean, it, it's fucking, you know, and, and then on top of all that, then you got to pay for it. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even want it. I have to pay for it because that's the only fucking way that you can watch it. You know, so I mean, it's, it's I mean, it's stupid. Like I said, I, I know why they did it. I mean, you know, because they, you know, wanted money, but I don't really see how that's growing their viewership. I mean, I didn't see any numbers on that Apple deal with the baseball last year, but I have to imagine that it was not as good as it could have been. I mean, I don't remember if they broadcast a bunch of big time games or not. I I guess I didn't pay that much attention to who was on it on the nights that I didn't need to watch it, but I would have to think that if they broadcast a Red Sox Yankees game that not as many people would have watched it had that game just either been on their regular networks or had that game been on like ESPN, like regular ESPN, not the app. You know, I mean, I I don't see how as many people would have watched that game if it was exclusively on Apple TV. Yeah, I don't know what you think. I mean, I can't imagine that many people would, right? I, I mean, maybe they did. I don't know. I mean, maybe they got all this know. fucking information, and I'm talking total nonsense or something, but I didn't watch it because of that. I mean, I sometimes want to watch Thursday Night Football, and then I'm like, mm, fuck that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do it. That's terrible. The games have been pretty duds, too, on top yeah, of it. Yeah, I mean, 
yeah, this year, right? I mean, some of them have been bad, you know, because, you know, some of these teams that they scheduled into them, you know, didn't turn out the way they thought. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. You know, but it's just, I just think they made it inconvenient, you know? And I mean, it's not just about the football either. I mean, they're moving other forms of entertainment to that style of um, – Deals. Yeah, and I don't know if it happens with you, and it might be my internet connection, but I get times when I it's all it's all pixelated and everything else, and it might yeah. just be my internet connection. But I'll sit there; it will buffer once in a while. But that's right, my internet connection. But yeah, but that's a no. I mean, if that happens, it's a no. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, I get a fuzzy a picture team and, and everything else, and it's catching up and everything else. Right. And, if you're watching a team that doesn't matter or something, you know, you know, like our two teams last year in rebuild mode and all this, yeah. I guess you probably don't care as much. But what if you're watching the game in the middle of September? Yeah, you, you want to see something that's happening. No, I mean, yeah, I mean all of a sudden it's happening. speeding up and catching up. What the hell, what the hell happened? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it just I just think that they made it more inconvenient and more difficult to watch. So I don't think anyone should be surprised that the viewership is down, you know? Yeah. And I don't know that – I don't know who they thought would run out and get all that just for that. I mean, like, I don't know. I Amazon's pretty big now, and Amazon's been around for a while. Like, if you don't have Amazon Prime by now, you probably don't want it, right? I, I don't know. I, I mean, don't think you're going to go out and get it for football. Right. I mean, even though football is king, but I'm just saying, like, the people that already don't have Amazon Prime probably are not. Very little. Be very right. few. My next door neighbor, he doesn't have Prime, and he said yeah. he ain't going to get it just because of football. Right. And I told him, well, you, at least you save it for the shipping. Yeah. And he said, nah, I'm not going right. to get it for that. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I would get it just for football if I hadn't already had it. You know, because I will pay to watch things I want to pay. Yeah, but, but you're probably one of the few and far between me. that would. Yeah, you know, but, that, but that's just me. So I, I don't know. I think I just thought that was, you know, I mean, NFL doesn't make too many mistakes, but that doesn't seem to have been the wisest decision. You could you could probably figure out where you get numbers for stuff like that, huh, Alex. What? You know, where you find numbers for, you know, things like when they put the NFL on on streaming services, what mm -hmm. the numbers, how the numbers change, because they put Thursday night football this year onto Amazon. Mm -hmm. And we we're trying to figure out, you know, how the numbers change, because it seems like, you know, at least for us, well, a Amazon. lot of times, you know, you just don't you don't go to watch the football game now. Because it's on Amazon, mm -hmm. it's a pain in the butt, or you forget about it. Yeah. It's not just on the channel that you're, you know, going through the channels and you see, oh, there's a football game. Oh, yeah, we're going to watch it. Yeah, let me, let me say this. Amazon, Amazon uh, I think, has more subscribers than any other service just by virtue of the fact that it's part of the Prime thing where you get your packages right. delivered for free. But do the numbers for the football game are they increased compared to where they were on network television? That's what they I may talking. not, but the numbers they get on network television are pretty good. And so right. uh, somebody like Amazon Prime would be happy to, you know, yeah, have that, you know. So. Well, that's what we were saying. There was apparently this year. Is there a big shift of Thursday night football is down? by about a million viewers a week. And there have been several weeks where it was down by 2 million viewers, almost mm -hmm. 2 million viewers, even though the NFL and it's all of its other this platforms. This was on the network, you mean? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what it Last was year it was. This year it's Amazon only. But all the NFL's non-network games, okay, mm -hmm. normal are all up. So the NFL is yeah. not happy with Amazon because Amazon promised that more people would watch it. And the NFL is saying, it ain't our product. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I just uh, jumped in here to say I figured the hour's up, so I would uh, yeah, it is. come in here and, and bring it to a close. I'm so sorry that more people didn't call you. Yeah, that's okay. Well, I mean, uh, that that uh, that bothers me. You know, I thought that some of the people who were listening to the other show would call up. Uh, Alan did. 
I noticed. Yeah, for a little bit. He said he had to go, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I hope you had fun doing this. You know, yeah. we'll do it yeah. again. And uh, good, good to help out. And thanks, uh, Kevin, for, you know, being the good sport to be here with him. Because if he if you didn't call, I would have immediately jumped in <laughs> and joined the conversation. But anyway, yeah, be. Yeah. we didn't have any, uh, any of those off the wall calls or anything. Either. No, good, good. Well, maybe that would have been something. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll see you next week, guys. Well, I'll see you guys probably tomorrow night. But anyway, uh, goodbye. And thanks to everybody who uh, ch- checked in on this. We had uh, Ray Spalone listening to us, too, looks like, on the chat. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, good. No, you had, a, you had a, I think, good size audience for this on the because you're just two That's intelligent good. guys. You know? All right. Anyway, uh, I'll talk to you soon. And goodbye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it.